Hey, what's happening, guys? We're going to do another board for the STEM program at the school. And when I was speaking with Jason, the STEM teacher, we were talking about different voltages. And he asked if in addition to the 5-volt power supply, the, you know, that'll be the first board in the chain. He said, could we also do a 12-volt? I said, yeah, 12, really nothing really needs 12 volts. I said, how about 9 volts? You know, keep it as safe for the kids as we can. He says, yeah, nine's good. So I went, look, I've got my Goofa Store or voltage regulator kit. 7809, let's make sure I got some. I do. So why don't we just go and design that board together right now? So we're looking at the data sheet for a 7805 or 70, yeah, 7809. Uh, voltage regulator and you can see our voltage in can be up to uh, 35 volts we're going to feed it with about 12 power dissipation up to 15 watts it's not going to be a problem output voltage minimum 8.65 max 9.35 that'll be just fine regulation okay voltage in 90 millivolt ripple that's fine for the kids it's not going to be a problem low quiescent current 8 milliamps I mean that's not super low but it's low enough all right let's uh go put it together okay here we're looking at the circuit itself power comes in the positive goes through a switch you have the coupling capacitor here and then it goes to the VN of the 7809 voltage regulator which is grounded and creates our ground row. Then our V out is going to go to a resistor here and then another decoupling capacitor at 100 nanofarad. And this one I'm doing kind of as a reservoir cap, 100 microfarad, just to keep things smooth. Here is the layout of the board. We've got our barrel jack here with the switch under it, our power LED here. We've added the new Toronto High School logo to all our boards from now on. And we just line up our capacitors over here and shoot the power out the side. Here is a 3D look at our board. Yeah, one thing you may not know about me, but my main goal in life is to one day have all the 3D models for the components I use when designing boards. Someday. This should give you an idea ground plane in the back yeah pretty simple if you're designing boards yourself and you need to get them made I recommend you go to PCB way I've been using them for years they haven't let me down once ordering boards from them couldn't be simpler just click on instant quote quick order the PCB and upload your Gerber file after that it's just a simple matter of selecting the particulars that you want and send that out here in the United States you get it back in about a week for about 30 bucks not bad not bad at all right all right so we need a switch We need an indicator LED. Do do do. do. Oh. Thought I had more heat sinks over here, and do not, but I have more. I just have to go and grab them. There's some barrel jacks. Uh, I think I need a 1K resistor as well. Some of them guys. Well, as you can see, I've got our components laid out here. There's our regulator, there's a heat sink for it, our DC jack, power indicating LED, current limiting 1K resistor, 100 microfarad reservoir capacitor. I did not mean to zoom in, pardon me. Trying something new here, new angles and whatnot. Things could get a little interesting. There's our power switch, our two decoupling capacitors, and there are the beautiful boards from PCB Way. 
So I'm going to put one of these together. As usual, we're going to start with the lowest profile component. In this case, it is the current limiting resistor. And that's for the LED. That's the only purpose it has in the circuit is so we don't blow up our LED. Then I'm going to put in this switch here as well. And we're going to secure them both with a little bit of blue tack. Now we'll flip it over. Get them soldered in. So it's uh, June 15th. And uh, it's hot. Like it was 88 degrees this morning and it is uh, considerably hotter than that now. And the humidity is up around 70%, which makes it just really exciting outside, you know? So if anybody's wondering why I am soldering on a hot day like this, well, there's about a 30 degree temper di temperature differential, not 30, yeah, 25 degree temperature differential between the outside and the inside. Me and Doggly have been out a couple walks today and uh, we're not getting too far. It is way too hot out there to be messing around. Now it looks like yeah, probably the LED will be the next lowest profile. And the barrel jack. <laughs> yeah, it's even making my uh my blue tack tricky to work with. One moment. There we go. Now we got our lump together real nice. Get nice and soldered up here. You know, too much else going on here. We've got that crazy new law in Ohio where you can just pick up your handgun and put it in the car and don't need a permit or training or nothing. That's going to be fun. All right, so that sends my political rant. I'm sorry. This is not a political channel. I just think that if you're going to be going around armed, you should get a minimum amount of training. Actually, I think you should get a maximum amount of training, but, you know. <laughs> Crazy little governor. Oh, look at that. I forgot one. That's what happens when I go off on a rant, which I'm trying not to do. I just got through saying that this board was pretty good. It wasn't needing a lot of flex, and now, now I can't get it to take there. Such has been my luck, especially if you watched yesterday's video. Oh, that just, that just sucked it up real nice. Excellent job, Uncle Rob. You make good stuff. Yeah, yesterday's video, I was working on the uh, DIY multimeter, and can't get the... Uh, Piezo buzzer to behave properly. All right, I guess we can do these two guys next. These are the 100 nanofarad. Well, I'm thinking of it. Let's just go ahead and flux up those pads. I'll tell you one good thing about Uncle Rob's magic solder flux. It ain't leaking. That cap is a... Uh, Heck of a seal, man. So let's get these guys in here. I'm gonna get going. Get them all nice and soldered. This is a nice, easy project. Nothing too challenging. <laughs> I 
I always go over my joints before I clip them. Make sure I get those little Hershey Kisses. The mark of a good joint. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put in the other cap. It's electrolytic, so we can't put it in backwards. We can see this is coming. This trace here is coming out of that post there, which I'm pretty sure is the center post. But if we flip this over, we can see that hole is in the ground plane. So the one mostly to that side, that's our ground. Yeah, I know this isn't the right footprint, but... You would be surprised at how well these little stubby caps fit in those polyester cap footprints. Yeah, they look good too. All right, here we go. Shouldering them up. We're almost done here. Yeehaw! Not quite sure I like that joint. We'll come back and check it. Yeah, it's all right. So that leaves our regulator and the output. So we'll get the regulator going here. Heat sink with this little heat conducting pad there. Then we have the uh, insulator there. Goes through the hole in a regulator. And just like that. Now, if you're looking for regulators like this, and just knowing what to call something is half the battle in finding it on sites like Mouse or DigiKey and Arrow or LCSC and any any of the sites that you know sell this type of merchandise is knowing what to call it. And if you're not in the field or you know a knowledgeable hobbyist with some experience, you're going, I don't need a heat sink for a what? TO220 heat sinks. That's what these are called. Works for MOSFETs, regulators, anything in this package. Buy your heat sinks via package for, for ICs like this. And then via dimensions for, uh, you know, the larger ones. You're definitely going to flex this guy up here. All right. that in there and like so and I'm just gonna put it here like this I'm gonna do one let that cool for a second now I can kind of maneuver this how I want it And now that it's where I want it, I can just make the two remaining connections and clip them off. So this is having a longer dwell time than I would like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the iron, retin it. Then I'm going to make sure I'm touching the pad here. And I'm going to rotate up to make sure I'm touching the pin as well. Then we go in like that. And we can end up getting a pretty nice joint. Who don't like a pretty nice joint? Oh. That looks to me... Like we got some sort of a solder bridge there. That's no bueno. There we go. No, it's key. 
All right, need one of them dinghies. Just happen to keep them right here. Uh, like at that. Like at this. And the like of that. And we'll solder them up. A little ambidextrous solder. Yeah, you know, in case there are any girls watching. I'm single and all. I know how the ladies like the ambidextrous soldering. All right, I think we got it. Let's find out if it works. All right, as you can see, we've got the power supply set for 12 volts. Well, let's give her a shot. All right, so we have our 12 volts from the power supply. Plugged in, power supply is not on. Turn on our output, nothing. Wait. Good. Now, we'll attach a meter so that we can actually check the voltage on it. Very ready and power it up. And 9.13 volts. Nice dim green, not too bad. Yep, I think she's a keeper. Hope you guys liked this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to PCB Way for making all these boards possible. We couldn't do it without them. Big thanks to you for watching, because I wouldn't be here without you. All right, guys. That's it. I'm out. Peace.